All right. Well, Principal Skiwi, thank you so much for joining uh, me at the Difficult Student Podcast. Um, can you please introduce yourself? Okay, I am Principal Skiwi, as everyone knows me on TikTok, but also Michelle Thomas. That is my real given name, Michelle Thomas. And I am the principal at, and I will say it, Martin Luther King Jr. Early Childhood Center. And it is in Texas. And we are a unique campus because I only have three and four-year-olds, pre-K students at my campus. My enrollment this year is about 387. So almost yeah. 400 three and four year olds. So we talked a little bit earlier. Can you tell us how many classrooms, how many classrooms do you have with three and four year olds? I have 14 classrooms and each one of them are 25 students a piece. I have um, four bilingual classrooms. So bilingual oh. students only, and then everything else is English. Um, we also have uh, for our ancillary or our specials, we have uh, science, I have a science lab. They go to library as well as art. Wow. Wow. How much support staff? That sounds like you need a lot of support staff for something like that. Do you have a big support staff or? Fun fact. Yes. I have one assistant principal. <laughs> <laughs> one assistant principal. It's you and the assistant principal. You have a, a coordinator or what, just you or her? Me That's it? And the assistant principal. Wow. I know. Wow. <laughs> with all those kids wow that yes. that is impressive that is impressive how long have you been a principal there can you tell us your story your background story about being at, at that school sure sure i started at my campus uh way back when <laughs> and i taught there for about eight years and then after that i left and got provided an opportunity to go and write curriculum for the early childhood department in the district so mm -hmm. i did that for a couple of years uh, I transitioned back to another early childhood campus where they asked me to be AP and the position got cut because of budget. So I ended up calling the principal that was the principal at the campus that I'm principal at yeah. and called her for a position because I didn't have a job. And she said all she had was a teacher job. And I'm like, I know how to teach. Like, that's not new to me. And, yeah. you know, for me, it's not a, a big deal, like a demotion. It wasn't being demoted. It's like, hey, I like teaching. I like instruction. So, yeah, I'll come back and teach. So came back and taught there for about maybe two or three years and then got offered a P position at that campus and then transitioned to principal of the campus. Wow. <laughs> that's 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 a that's a that's a story. So <laughs> that's definitely a story. Circle. Full a circle. full circle, full circle. How did you transition from being a classroom teacher? You were a classroom teacher and then going into being a assistant principal and principal. How did the staff look at you? Your teachers look at you differently? They treat you differently? Interesting. Was it, one more thing. Like, was it like, um, so, cause I think about that. I'm like, okay, they saw you one way as a teacher yes. and now you're telling them what to do. Yes, they Tell saw me several different that. ways because they saw me as a teacher there when I first came. As I transitioned to a curriculum writer, I still would have to come and do PD for them okay. and coach and do so. They saw me in that capacity. They saw me as assistant principal at that campus, and then they saw me as principal. So they've known me for years, yeah. years. Like literally, they met me when my son was about maybe six, seven years old. My son is now 22. So they've okay. known me forever. For a while, so yeah. It, it was a, at first I felt like, and this was just me and my own thinking, transitioning from assistant principal to principal, that it was going to be difficult. But as I sat back and made sure that I talked to each one of them individually and asked them, you know, how is it that you see me? as a principal what mm. is it that you're looking for from me as a principal mm. not as michelle the person that you guys know but as a principal and we had real serious talks and some of them had a lot of apprehension because they know that i know each one of them i know their yes. families their kids and they were like you know i know that you are you know closer to some because y'all grown together oh, yeah. and so it was like well i just don't want you to be the principal who is this is your favorite because y'all are friends or because y'all yeah. know each other. This is your favorite or this, you know, and I'm like, y'all, when I cross the threshold, I am Principal Thomas. Anything other than that is not here. And it took a while because they had to see it for themselves. Yes. You know, you can say it all you want to, but your actions, you know, it's like 
if I know you personally and you have not met uh, an expectation or whatever, I'm calling you in for a meeting. What's going on? It doesn't matter who you are. So they had to see that for them to be comfortable. And so now it's just like, okay, it's principal Tom. I mean, they still call me Michelle and some of them call me Thomas, but you know, that's because they know me, but the, the feeling of, I'm afraid that it's going to be a, uh, I'm going to always be on the out and they're going to always be on the end because we don't know each other like that. It's totally gone. I mean, now, I can come with the truth to yeah. them and I can come with the honesty to them. This is what's happening in your class. This is not what's happening. And it's okay. That's good. You know, it sounds like you, those, those individual meetings that you made beforehand, I think that really set you up for success. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think about, yeah, like that, that's probably the way to do it to talk to everybody individually instead of just a giant group yeah. and just lay it all out. And um, yeah, it sounds like that's, that's what helped you out. Yeah. Have you ever had, a, go ahead. They, they had to be comfortable enough to be honest enough yes. with me to not give me the fluff stuff, you know, yes. yeah, Thomas, we're going to, it's going to be okay. And we no, I want you to, and I'm like, y'all no hose bars, give it to me straight up. I yes. want you to tell me what is your fear about me being now your leader? What yes. what are you what are you uh I don't know how this going tell me the truth about it. I can I'm you know, and I tell them all the time, y'all, I can take the truth. I really can. Yeah. That's good. And I would say like, well, I remember when we went to happy hour one time and you know, like we said so you came to my my son's birthday party and we all hung out and and now you're going to go ahead and tell me what to do and I don't know if I I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, that's probably what I would say. <laughs> that's the conversations. Those yeah. were the conversations. Like you've been in my house, like yes, and you know, like you say, we've been in happy hour as teachers. Yes. How is that gonna pan out now that you are my boss? You know, that's scary for somebody yes. who's I'm a teacher and you're the boss, but we were right here. Equals. And that's when I look at myself here and here because I tell them all the time, y'all. I will scrub the toilets. Y'all know I don't care. Whatever we got to do to get this That's thing right. done, let's get it done. So, yes. you know, it, it. but for them, you know, being able to flip and see me in a different light as she's leading the school, we got a vision. This is where we're all going. It has nothing to do, and I tell them all the time, y'all, it has nothing to do with me as a person. Mm-hmm nothing to do with me it's got to do with our vision and where we want to see these children go and where we want this school to go that's right that's can it. you t- can you speak about that vision what sure. is the vision for your school the vision for my campus and it's and this was the first time that even in my three years as principal that i jumped out there like this So, you know, we, you know, you have your pre-service stuff and you're in there and you're doing the whole thing and it's time for us to talk about the mission and the vision and all of that. You know, you got to do that. So I'm telling them, okay, y'all, I need y'all to sit back, put your seatbelt on. Here we we go. go. Here Here we we go. go. I said, here's the vision for this year and for every year up until the point of my departure. I want, we want 100%. I didn't say 75. I didn't say 70. I said 100% of students at this school to be kindergarten ready by the end of the year as determined by the circle assessment in each subtest. And they looked at me like, you must be crazy, lady. I said, and I looked at them like. Yep. It is what it is. That's it. This is it. I'm like, y'all, this is it. I I don't want 75. I said, I'm not going to say that the kids can do it because they can. I'm going to say, you can do this. You have the tools. I know y'all. I've seen y'all. You can do this. I said, then we get to say the kids did it. You can do yeah. it. And yeah. so that that was a lot of pulling and convincing. And let's do it like this. And let's change it up. What do y'all think? 
I said, but we're going to get this 100%. Fun fact, I looked at my action plan just today. And I'm looking at it because we're doing MOY assessments. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, this sub test. Okay, okay. We're 70 good. on this. We're That's 60 good. on this. Okay, we got, we're like 40 on that. And I'm like, okay, we almost there. That's good. I didn't tell them because they don't get to see the composite as a campus. They see their individual yeah. scores. But when I looked at it as a school, I'm like, ooh. So tomorrow, I'm going to show them. That's exciting. Guess what? Y'all thought that that was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. But, but guess yeah. what? So would you say that because you set the bar so high, the teachers just had to live up to that bar? Well, no, because they don't have to. They don't have to. Because I tell them all the time, will and skill. You You might be have the skill, yeah. but you could care less. That's right. But you might be like, ah, I want to do it. I want to do it. But you kind of, kind of, yeah, you're missing a few yeah. things. That instruction is not as tight. So they didn't have to do it and they didn't have to. But I think that the mindset and the confidence that I have in them gave them the confidence to know that she's serious. Yeah. Like she can do, like, she really thinks we can do this. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't think y'all can do. I know. I say, I know y'all can do it. There are some things that we need to fix. And that's the part. I need y'all to be able to be open to if you've been doing it this way all along, maybe we need to tweak it a bit so that we can get to where we're going. Yeah. I need you to be open. I'm like, I'm, I'm not telling you to flip this and change this and do all. I need you to be open that part so how often do you go back to your school mission and your vision is yeah. this a, every every pd you're doing this what is this and the, and now fun fact i always say that but fun fact they bring it up to me okay so Ms. thomas is that what we're getting ready to do is that decision gonna get us to that 100 percent? oh wait a minute so y'all pulling it back on me like yeah. everything that we do needs to be gearing towards getting this if it's uh, a fun day does that get us to the mission how does that get us to the mission maybe it's just a fact that we're building community with this fun festival day okay that's gonna build it because guess what now we got buy-in from some parents now we can talk to some parents and catch them and say hey guess what we're doing this this it everything buys into this mission whatever we do is doing on this field trip how does that go with this 100% that you want. Love it. Yes. I love they, it. They call me to the carpet a lot of times. Now, Miss Thomas, you said we're going to do this, this, and this, and this. How's that fit in with the mission? Oh, well, you, oh. Tell me how you think it fits in with the mission. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And that's the part that I love because that's when I know that now you believe it. Yeah. You believe it for real. That's good. So what is a, a, a day in the life of Principal Skiwi? What does it look like? I know every day is different. I know every day is different. That but like, what what do you do daily? What's your daily routine? Okay. First thing, come in and, you know, get myself settled. And first thing I do is check my emails to see, you know, what happened overnight. Because, you know, at, I have bosses who think that they don't go to sleep. And so they yeah. email yeah. all night. <laughs> so the, I got to see if, is there something that I need to do immediately before yeah. I get going? So once I get that settled, the kids start coming in at about 720 and I'm standing at the door and I greet every single kid. And I told my parents at the beginning, we had a, a parent orientation. I said, I'm giving myself and every year I give myself until October. I'm giving myself until October to know every last one of your kids' names. How many kids? We're close to 387, Ooh. 387, almost 400. I said, I'm giving myself until October. And I know every last one of them. So when they come in, I Ooh. speak their name. Good morning, John. Good morning, Sophia. Good morning. Uh, good, and and, and yeah. see that in itself, when, the, when they hear me call their name, it's like, let me tell Miss Thomas what I did. Or let me tell, and, I, and I'm going to stop and talk to you. Yeah. So 
talking to the kids. So doing that, I do that up until our, our arrival is from 7.20 until 8. And the kids go straight to the classroom and eat breakfast. Then I start doing my morning walks. Oh, I, before I do that, I greet my teachers. I go down and greet my teachers and say, good morning. You know, what's going on with you? You know, just to see their faces, to see if they got what face are you wearing today? Is it a, <laughs> you know, like, is it okay day or something going on? Because I do check on them, you know. Yeah, Make sure that they are okay. Because if you're not okay, you're not going to be okay for my kids. And this yes. is something we need to talk about. So I do that. Then I greet the kids. Then I do my walks to make sure that, you know, everybody's prepared. The kids are signing in. You got your, your DOL up, your objectives up there, and everything's in place. Just, you know, just a little walk, you know, like, y'all know I'm going to check instruction because that's what I'm about. So, you know, to make them, you know, see me doing that. Then after everybody's settled, they start instruction. I go get my, my laptop, and I'm going in the classrooms. I'm in classrooms all day. I am – I think I see my office – Probably around, I eat lunch around one. Yeah. And go in and eat one at one. Or if I have a meeting or something to go to, and you know, I'll do that. But I eat and then I'm in classrooms all day. Sometimes it's just in there just watching. Sometimes I'm on the floor with the kids, working with them with a workstation. Sometimes I'm talking to a teacher now, you know, I'm watching them and I'm like, okay, let's look at this. Like, oh, let me give you a little, this was good. But yeah, if you do this, that's going to push it over. So I'm just out. In the hallway all day, all day. If I have to go to art or, you know, something like that, I do those things in between and try to schedule those. Or if there's a parent meeting, a parent needs to talk to me about something, I do schedule those. And that's one thing my parents have learned, that they cannot just drop in and say, I need to talk to Miss Thomas. I'm like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. The way mm -hmm. my job is to be in out here with your kids. So if you have a concern, my secretary We'll let you know my schedule and we can schedule the night. If it's something that's just dire and we got to do it, of course, I'm going to do it. Yeah. But most of the time it's some, some nothing stuff. Like, yeah. 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 So <laughs> then, you know, we, they're going through the day. I'm out and about. Then about uh, 2.45, we get ready for dismissal. And wow. all of them go home. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's a different approach to be out in classrooms all the time. I'm sure you're I'm sure you're responding to emails and doing your office, whatever was required as well, but it's in the classroom. It's mm -hmm. in a classroom. I'm sure that that man, that's your presence at that school. It sounds like it's uh, you're making a, a just a huge impact and you have a big presence at that school, which you're because I don't really hear. I've never even seen that. What you're saying right now, when I was a classroom teacher, I've never I've never been a school where a principal was just in classrooms all day long. Never seen that. I have never seen that before. I, uh, as an assistant principal, I've been. This is my third year as assistant principal. Mm -hmm. um, I try to get into classrooms as much as I can. Um, I do. I, I don't do it like what you're saying right now. You've raised the bar. Like what I've I've never heard anybody say that they're in the classroom the whole day. It's hard. <laughs> the it's the hard. whole day. Oh, I know it's. I know it's hard. But but I could see how valuable that is i can see how valuable that is to the kids to yes. the teachers yes. uh to the school community like if if uh if i'm a if i'm a if my son comes home and says oh principal ski was in my classroom uh for a good 20 minutes today oh she was yeah. oh wow and then like five days later later oh she was in my classroom again yeah. she yeah. came back and she was in my class really yeah. i mean the impact of that, I just think about what kind of impact that would make, make a huge impact, a big difference. Yeah. You know, so especially like that's when I'm when I'm not in going to just do evaluation as I'm, yeah. special, I'm just coming in and I'm sitting on the floor with, with a kid saying, Tell me about your workstation. What are you working on? And they're oh, I'm I'm rhyming. Well, show me how you do that. How do you do yeah. that rhyming? And they and I'm sitting down playing with the, the manipulatives with them. And they're they're teach they're teaching me how to do the work. Yeah, man, you're you're making me step up my game. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like I need to step up my game after hearing all of what you just did today. I'm like, man, I need to step up my game. I need to my my classroom, you know, presence needs to be much better than than what it is now. <laughs> but it's hard. It's so hard. I do on the weekend, you know, I have everybody's daily schedule and I try to, you know, I 
map it out to um i spend about maybe 15 minutes in each you know for whatever yeah, day it course. is 15 minutes because that's about all i can do to try of to course. get to you know everybody that i want to get to but you know about 15 minutes and i go in there and either if i am doing an you know an evaluation i'll do that and if not i'll take a minute or two just to walk around and talk to some kids you know talk to the teacher about yeah. you know you know i watched your lesson you know this is this is this and i'm gonna send you some feedback or i leave a sticky note on their on their computer and say i love this when you did that think about this uh, yeah yeah that's good that's good but it's hard and it's tiring but at the end of the day i love it and that's the part. Yeah, that's good. You know, like if you would have said, I have 14 classrooms and I go into maybe like three classrooms a a, a day. Oh, that's that's respectable. That's good. Like three, that three a day, every day you go to three classrooms, three times five, that's 15 classrooms a week. That's wonderful. If you would have said something like that, I'd be like, that's pretty good. But you're saying, <laughs> I go into every classroom every day. I'm like, that is impressive. I try, try. I, yeah, and I, yeah, even if you, exactly. I go to 10, 10 classrooms out of yeah. 14, that's yeah. impressive. That crazy. is impressive, it's crazy. And I don't, my my AP does not appraise, I appraise everybody, yeah, by myself. I'm like, yeah. I don't want you to um appraise the teachers and coach the teachers because mm. to me, those clash. Mm. How can I trust you, you know? as my coach and now you're going we yeah. gotta have, we gotta have a different kind of relationship we gotta have the coach ap relationship yeah. hmm. where i can feel like i'm i can tell you i'm struggling i'm struggling i don't get it i don't get this guideline i don't get this skill show me how to do it what can i do to make it better and then i'm gonna come back in two days and go you still suck at it i'm saying suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you still not I doing get it. it yeah i get it so kind of relationship yeah for and that's me good. no that makes sense it makes sense where you there's certain roles you play a role and your assistant principal play, plays a role and you're yeah. gonna stick to that role we're not gonna cross roles you're not gonna play my part and i'm not gonna play your part mm -hmm. we got roles to play and mm -hmm. it's very clear yeah and i think that that is a great idea yeah it's a great idea yeah um how do your teachers feel about you being in the classroom all the time <laughs> at first it was like you back yeah. again. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm back again. Yeah, I'm back again. And yeah. and I talk to them just like I'm talking now. That's the I'm I don't change and they and they always say, Miss Thomas, you are so country. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm pretty country, whatever. But at first it was like, you know, are you coming in to appraise me? Are you coming in just to, you know, now yeah. it's like go open the door for Miss Thomas. She's at the door again. Get, you know, yeah. if I don't have my keys or something, you know. So now it's just like Miss Thomas is bad. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm doing my thing with my kids. They And the kids don't even, some of them, you know, they'll turn around, hey, Miss Thomas, you know, all that. Some of them are like, it's just Miss Thomas again, whatever. Like, we, we're paying attention to you, teacher. We're, we're, yeah. So it's, it's, we've gotten comfortable with it yeah. and it's okay. But at first it was like, oh my God, you were just here. Like, and then sometimes I, I might go in and go out, do some other things and circle back and come back, you know, cause I, I'm like, oh, I want to see her do, cause she might mention something. And I'm yeah. like, oh, she said she was going to do this. I'm going to come back. Cause I want to see that part. I want to see, and then, but now it's like, we don't care if yeah. you come in. And they, they'll even invite me. Are you coming? I'm, I'm doing this today. It's going to be a good science lesson because I'm doing this. And I'm like, okay, look, it wouldn't know my, my schedule. You weren't, but, but I'm going to try my best to come by. So they've, they've gotten used to it. It's okay yeah. because it's not intimidating. It's yeah. not, you know, I'm coming in to give you the points for the yeah. appraisal, you know? Exactly. So, I mean, so what, it is, yeah, what do you, what do you do? Like you're in the classroom. <laughs> And a, and a student is misbehaving. Do you step in or do you allow the teacher to handle it? I don't want to take the respect from the teacher. Yes. So I'm sitting back and I know what I want to hear and I know what I want to see. So I'm stepping back and I'm watching and I'm watching and looking and listening. Most of the time they get it right. But if they don't, you know, I'm going to slide in on the side and say, 
I might need you to talk about maybe let's do some breathing or maybe you could tell him to go to the calm corner. And then I step back. Yeah. Because I don't want to take, I don't want you to respect Principal Thomas. I need for right. you to respect your teacher. Yeah. Because I'm not your teacher. I'm not with you all the time. And yes, you need to respect the other adults in the school, but she spends more time with you than I do. So That's I right. need for you to respect. So they, you know, they, if I don't see or hear what it is, I'm going to give them the little quiet coach and, you know, just say, think about this. If you take this, how you think that's going to make him react? And then, yeah. try, and then I step back and see what happens. And then, yeah. you know, if it was, if it gets to a point where it's really just out of control, then, you know, because I want you, I don't want this to interrupt your instruction. I'll, you know, say, okay, I'm going to take it for a few minutes and we're going to go outside or we might go to the, the room down the hallway where we have some little quiet, you know, things, you know, SEL stuff where you can re deescalate yourself and calm down and I'll take them down there, but I'm bringing you back, you know, and then you, when I bring them back, you need to have a little mini conference with a four-year-old and yeah. talk to the four-year-old about what happened, why it happened what can you do better next time and how can you and then a little practice you know because yeah. if everybody's at their workstation let's have a little practice so if it happens again you know how we can do it better that's so, good yeah. so how do how do the teachers feel when you take the student out and then you bring them back do you get well, pushed back do you get pushed back like okay. why is he back in the classroom none of that stuff i know they're to, young i know they're really young but we used to get the he back already? I'm like, y'all, I'm telling you, I'm going to take him for a few minutes to de-escalate the kid, and yeah. I'm bringing him back. Because this your, this is class. He's supposed yeah. to be in class, not hanging with me. Because then it becomes, I want to go with Miss Thomas and hang out with Miss Thomas because it's fun. Yes. Not, I need to be in class and do my work. Yeah. So, at first, it was a little bit of, oh, my God, that was five minutes? That was ten minutes? Like, yeah, yeah it was. I'm bringing it back. So, But now it's like, it, and it only happens to where it's like a case where I, they really can't bring them down. And yeah. it's taken away from the instructional time. And the other kids are just kind of idle, you know, like waiting for it to come down so we can get back to what we were doing. Then I remove them and then bring them back. But now it's like, okay, you know, and they'll tell them, you know, when you're going with Miss Thomas, you're coming back. You're coming back and we're going to talk about what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And do you feel like in general, let's just say like in general, uh, not in your school, but do you feel like teachers have a problem with administrators bringing their students back to class after some de-escalation? Yeah. Yeah. I, I read stuff all the time, you know, um, online and stuff, you know, little teacher forums and all of this stuff, principal forums where teachers are saying, you know, they take them. But the problem is that I see a lot is that they take them and give them some snacks or give yeah. them some chips or give them some, you know, some great little prize from the treasure right. box or whatever, but not talking about what the problem was, you know, yeah. just giving them something to quiet them down and bringing them back. And that's when I think teachers get upset is that you just bringing them back with a snack. Well, what did that solve? Because we're going to have the same issue again. Like That's you right. didn't help, help me or the kid, neither yeah. one. And, you know, before my kids walk back into the classroom, you know, we have a little discussion and I say, you know, first thing it is, you need to ask, can you come back? And if Miss such and so says that you can't come back, we need to find out why you can't come back. I said, because all the time people may not be as forgiving as Miss Thomas. <laughs> Miss Thomas will let you and she'll forgive you and be like, okay. But all the time, if you keep doing this over and over, your teacher might not be real happy. Yeah. So you might need to ask, can you have permission to come back and try again? And, yeah. you know, teacher has never told a kid, no, you can't come back. But they always, <laughs> you know, but I need them to get in the in their head, the kid, that you can't continue to have display the same behavior and say, I'm sorry, and do it over again. Yeah. There's some consequences. And it might be, no, you can't come back right now. I need for you. And then I don't, I don't take them back with me. I'm like, okay, well, that means you need to go to Mr. Such and so's room to finish your language arts lesson. Uh, let me get your workstation, go get your workstation. And we're going to go down here and maybe we'll try again in about 30 minutes and see if you can come back to your classroom. Cause I need you to appreciate your teacher. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like that. Asking a teacher, is it okay if they come back? Um, that's, that's good. Giving the teacher 
that power. And like you said, most of the time they'll say, yeah, you come back, yeah. but I need you to do these things. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a good, that's a good move. That's a good move. Yeah. Definitely a good move. Um, how important is it uh, when it comes to building relationships? Uh, do, do your teachers go out of the way to build relationships with, the, with their students, especially students with difficult behavior? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. They make sure. I think that's the ones that they like the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think In a way, the, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they like them, but they're like, oh, Lord, you dragging me today. But those are the ones that they're like, mm because they want to see that moment where that kid gets it and it's not like I'm flipping out. Yeah. They they wait for that moment like, "Oh, he got it today." Like yeah. I told him no cuz that's a hard one for 3 and 4 year olds. No, you can't do that. <sighs> I'm gonna fall out. Cuz yeah. I'm 3. I'm used to getting what I want to get when I want to get it and if I fall right. out, that really makes me get what I want to get at home. So yeah. they they wait for that moment like I told him no today and he accepted no. Or I looked at his work and it wasn't quite what, you know, I know that he can do. It wasn't quite to the caliber of what I know that he can do. And yeah. I told him, you know, here's your feedback. I need for you to go back and try that again. And they didn't fall out. They wait for those moments because that's when they know you're growing up, little friend. You are yeah. growing up. That's yeah. awesome. See, what the when, when you talk about your kids... I would think that you'd be te you would teach your elementary school like first, second, third, fourth grade students. I treat them like that. It sounds like you treat them like that. It sounds like you treat them like uh, they're responsible young young boys and girls, like really responsible. And like you, it doesn't sound like they're three and four year olds. I, I expected to hear a lot of tantrums, a lot oh. of crying. I'm not. I'm not. When I saw that you were uh, you taught at a like, I was like, oh, kindergarten. Uh, early primary center, like I was like, oh, that's that's gotta be rough. A lot of crying, a lot of tantrums, a lot on the floor, kids yeah. flipping out. That's what I thought happened. Yeah. But do you yeah. ever have the kids just flip out? Yeah, I do. Remember, it's not rainbows and butterflies yeah. every day. It is okay. not. I do have kids who flip out. Who you know, I'm you know, may I may take off running, or you know, I'm gonna holler. I've had you know people, kids who throw chairs. Yes. It's not rainbows and butterflies okay. all the time. It's not, but you, you know, that kid that has that moment and, you know, you can see it most of the time that it's coming. It's coming. I can see it. I can see it on the kid's face. I can see it in their body. I can see it in their hands. I can see when it's coming so I can, or the yeah. teacher can jump on it before. Hey, I see that you're, you know, getting ready to get a little upset. Mm. Every every teacher in my in my class in my school has a calm corner, okay. and they've taught the children how to know when it's coming on. I don't care whatever it is. If I'm mad, I'm upset, and they go they they now take themselves to the calm corner. It's awesome. And there are some little toys, you know, some little yeah. tinker things, some things that I can do to put my energy into the little Rubik's cube or put my energy into the stress ball or. I got some paper that I can draw about what I'm mad about. And then I can bring it to the teacher and we can talk about it at recess. So there are things that they train them to say, okay, I want to choose the, the Rubik's cube and I'm up there. You ain't going to get the Rubik's cube. Right. But you, yeah. you know, you're, twisting and turning <laughs> yeah. and you're getting the energy out and that anger now goes into, and now, and they set a timer. They have a timer. They set the timer. So it's, it's a two minute timer, a three minute timer, or one minute timer. And they know one minute you're gonna be there for one minute, and one they don't get one minute, but they know one minute is the shortest, and their yes. three minute is the longest. So it's a little sand yeah. timer, and they know. Okay, I think I might need in their mind three minutes. Yeah. So flip the little hourglass over, and they do whatever they gotta do, and then when they see the sand come out, that means my my fit is over. Yeah. And I need to go back and still ask my teacher, can I join the group again? And That's can I good. sit down with the group? But it, it's not rainbows and butterflies all the time. Like I said, you know, we, we have we've had CPI training. So I do sometimes have children who I do have to, you know, put in a, a correct a hole. hole or, yeah. you know, you know, sometimes I have to send you home. You know, yeah. if it's that bad, I do have to send you home. So, you know, but we try not to. I want you to stay at school because you need to be at school. But if it's to the point where it's just putting other children 
in harm's way or you're about to hurt yourself or you're about to injure other other teacher that means i gotta call your mom and we gotta have yeah. a discussion and then you know maybe we need to see some things what's going on maybe we need to go to it something's happening yeah. so yeah yeah but they all flip outs flip out yeah. the shoes pretty much every day so if i have to take off and run <laughs> <laughs> um oh yeah you you did post a video of you like doing parkour yeah. You got a parkour video. <laughs> I, I, I remember, remember that. And they'll say, they'll say, assistance in, I need assistance in room number three. That's when I know it's bad. Yeah. When they call me. That's when I know it's bad. I need assistance in room number three. And I'm I'm on the way. And I come down there and whatever it is, you know, kids may be off to the left and the kid is there doing his thing. And, you know, I got to be able to sit down on that floor and first, because sometimes they so in it. Yes. That they don't see you and they don't hear you. So I got to come down to you and be on your level and be like, okay, you know what the South was? I need for you to breathe. Yeah. You go outside. You're not going to stay in it because I need to get you out of this element. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it sounds like you have a lot of strong teachers with good classroom procedures, right? The timer, the one minute, two minute, the call me corner. You have to ask me to go you know, join the classroom. It sounds like you have a lot of good things in place, mm -hmm. but what happens? How, you get, let's say you get a new teacher okay, and they don't, they yeah. don't know. They don't know those procedures. They have, they have no classroom procedure. How do you help them out? Ooh, that is a thing where I'm sending in my AP and okay. I'm telling her, this is what I'm seeing. And this is what I think is missing. I need for you to go and let's calibrate and see if we see the same thing. Now, if we see the same thing, we all know the systems and we know the routines of my campus. Let's see now if we can talk to this teacher and see if she can see the missing piece. Because everything is based on a system and a routine. Yes. Yes. And if your systems and your routines are tight, then you can get the same result as room number seven, room number eight, room number. But are you following the system and the routine with consistency? Yes. Are you following it with fidelity? Are you, or just, you kind of trying to figure it out? So maybe we need to practice it. Maybe we need to have an advance with whatever it is that we see that we all three finally see that this is the piece that's missing. Yeah. Let's add batters. Let's demo day it. Let's practice it so you can get good at it. That's good. Because it's really a skill. Good. It's a skill. Yeah. Teaching is a skill. That's right. So, like, there's, I run into people that believe that, uh, you know, that you need a magnetic personality. You need Ooh. to, you need to have, uh, you need to be charming. You have to do, you have to be very outgoing. No, it's not the case. No, in order to have good classroom management, your personality doesn't really matter as long as you have good classroom procedures. As long as you have those systems and routines in place and you follow them with consistency and you're sure about what you're doing. Like when, when we first three years ago, when I first came into the pr principalship at my campus, you know, we went through every single system what does it look like when the children come in the room what are you doing what do you expect the kids to do and yeah. we wrote it down line by line what are you doing at this point what are you doing what do you expect the kids to be doing everything is a system and a routine some of my teachers are very quiet like meek and you know and so it's not i need you to do yeah they're very quiet but they follow the system and the routine with their personality. Some of my teachers are, whoop, 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 you know, that. Yep. But they follow the same system and routine with their personality. So yeah. it has nothing to do with, I'm, I'm the outgoing teacher that's, you know, dancing and doing all of this, or I'm the quiet one that, you know. And fun fact, the kids take on the personality of the teacher. I, you can tell the classrooms. I'm like, I'm like, just like y'all's teacher. That's like, interesting. I'm like, the kids in the in the whoop whoop teacher, they act just like that. Not in a bad way, but yes. that's who they are. The teacher that's really meek and humble and quiet and talks to them like this all the time. The kids are like, okay, we're there. 
I'm like, <laughs> no, they're just like y'all's teacher. And then there's yeah. me come in with all of it. I'm all over the place. So yeah. it's the systems and routines. If you if you know and you've gone through as a campus together, because every classroom looks different, but we all have the same systems and routines. That's good. How, how do you do that? How do you implement that you all have the same systems? How do you do that? We, I told you, we sat down and we went through the whole day, walk-in breakfast. What does okay. it look like? What are the kids? Right, children will get this, this, and this. Children will go to the car, okay. get their breakfast. Children will put their placemat on the table. Now, that's the kid side. What are you doing? I stand at the door. I'm monitoring kids inside. I'm looking at the hallway outside. I'm doing this, this line item. Okay. Then we move to calendar time. Okay. I How thought that that's what, what I thought you you're saying that because when you became a principal, this is what they taught you to do. No. You sat with your teachers and went line by line on day one during like professional development before the school even started yep. line by line. This is what I expect. This is this what, what's supposed to, these are the routines. This is the routines. What yeah. does it look like when y'all wow. transition from breakfast? How do you transition them? What do you what do you expect the children to? I expect them to take their milk and pour it in the whatever. I expect them to take their thing and put the food in the trash. I expect yeah. them to take a wipe and wipe the table. Now, what are you doing while they're doing that? Yeah. And we wrote line by line. This is the expectation. So when you transition them to the carpet, how are you calling them to the carpet? Are you going to use colored shirts? And you can flip it up. You know, I'm yeah. going to kids with tennis shoes today. Kids with the, yeah. I'm going to boys first. Girl, are you going to transition? Or because you just can't say come to the carpet because now you got 25 four year olds running to the carpet. So right. what does that look like? I mean, we had to line item each part of the day and say, okay, when we do whole group lesson, how do you expect them to sit? Where do you want them to sit? Where are you gonna be? What are you doing? It, it And it had to be just that meticulous to where it, it ended up being like a document that was like about 15, 20 pages. Mm -hmm. But we okay. knew what it looked like. We knew what we wanted it to look like. And each one of them may do it differently. Yeah. They they um they are not all cookie cutter same. Mm. They do it differently. Yeah. But they know what they want it to look like. Yeah. Wow. That's that's impressive. And staying um, on the kids to make them follow it. That's yeah. the biggest piece. You got it all written down and you know what you want to see. But now that first day, we gotta start teaching them because they've never been in school. Most of yeah. them are coming from home with grandma or mom, or they're coming from daycare, which is not a structured school setting. It's daycare. Yeah. It's a free for all. So teaching them, when we go to the restroom, this is how you line up. You get this paper towel. You squirt. This means, I mean, literally, how many squirts do you need? Because, you know, you go back there yeah, and you got doing this all day. So yeah. it had to be, we teach you every single thing of what we want to see in this classroom yeah <laughs> that, i'm over here just like i know this is a podcast but i'm over here absorbing <laughs> like all of your wisdom i'm like okay you're just talking and i'm thinking like okay uh my my school my classroom this class why didn't we do that why didn't we like what you're saying is like we should we should have done these things uh, that would have been very helpful, you know. So thing. I think because of the fact that I have three and four year olds and they've never been in a school setting, I know that they don't know these things. Yeah. You could say line up. They don't know what that means. But you'd be surprised that fifth graders still don't know how to do something like that. You'd be surprised really? that in the third grade you say line up and they're they they they're they don't know what to do. Really? You, you would be surprised. That yeah, how many? How many? Like they go to the restroom and they'll pump like, I don't know, like fifteen pumps of or something like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, you would be surprised. But I think that if it was explicitly stated, right, this is what it is. And I think that if the teachers worked together and created some sort of document, like this is what it is, and everybody was on board and everybody knew, I think that that'd be so helpful. Yeah. I think that a lot of times 
people go into, you know, the first, uh, the, f- the beginning of the year, the biggest school year, you got a bunch of different grade levels. And I don't think everybody's helping each other. Mm-hmm. I don't think that people are saying, hey, let's all work together to come together and come up with one one plan. I think that some people think that their plan is better. Mm-hmm. Some people think some people are afraid to even talk or ask for help because they think that if I ask for help, then I'm an, an inferior teacher. Yeah. Right. I, I'm an inferior teacher and I don't want to ask for help because everyone will look at me like, oh, I'm the one that doesn't have good classroom management. The kids run all over me. So they don't say anything. Right. And so they start the school year and people you got people with great classroom management out front. And then you got some people that with poor classroom management that and I'm just looking at it from a ministry point of view. We should have done something like that at the beginning of the school year. We probably should have done something at the beginning of the school year. And that would have helped out some of the behavior problems that we have now. Yeah. Now it's like too late. Like you, we have behavior problems and in January, starting February, it, it's, it's you now you're just holding on. Like really? you're just holding on till the end of the school year because the beginning in some of these classrooms, uh, maybe it didn't start out the way it was supposed to. And maybe as administrators, I should have stepped in. I should have came in more, you know, I should have helped out and, you know, just hearing what you have to say, you know, it really opens up my eyes. Like, okay, okay. I, I see it from a different point of view. Yeah. yeah. And, and then um, also we, um, the first two weeks, we're not doing instructions. I don't want you to learn your letters and your sound and your, I, I don't want you to learn that. I want you to learn the system and routine. So yeah. we spend two weeks and I know that for upper grades, that's hard because they got to get y'all, you know, the upper grades, they got to yeah. get into that instruction yeah. you gotta get because, you know, testing is coming up. Yes. Yeah. But for us, we spend the first two weeks systems and routines. That's it. Yeah. That's I need good. for you to know how this classroom is going to function so that by the time we get to October, the teachers and, it, and it's firm, it's not mean but it's firm yeah we we practice it with the kids we're going to practice lining up today we're going to practice every time we're going to practice how to get your workstation we're going to practice how to sit at a workstation we call it workstation etiquette you don't get flipping flopping all of it we practice it and then we make the kids look at each other did you see what did he do wrong how come we had to start over oh because he was doing whatever and they know this this we didn't when we lined up we didn't all stand on our toucan and we were not you know we were turning around and touching each other and we didn't do the when we were on the carpet we were not sitting in llp we had our legs out and hands were everywhere they yeah. know so it gets to a point where we practice it and practice yeah. it and practice that's, it. that's great you know when i when i was a classroom teacher i had the one of the I felt like the best classroom management, like every, every school I went to, it was like, ah, oh, classroom management is just easy, 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 easy. And then you go, you become, a. I was a dean after that. So I was, I was 18 years classroom teacher, uh, three years as a dean that, that I became administrator. And then as administrator, you know, you deal with uh, adults, you deal with adults and it's a little, it's tricky. It's yeah. tricky dealing with adults. It's tricky to, to tell them like to, you see something, and you don't want to step on their toes and you're like, oh, how do I, how do I go about that? And uh, it's, you know, after just hearing some of the things you have to say, it's like, okay, out the gate, here is what is expected. Here's what is expected. And we're going to stick to it with fidelity. And, Absolutely. you know, that's, that's what it is. And we're going to be honest with each other. We're going to be honest with each other. Uh, yeah, that's what I hear from you. And that's, yeah. that's, it's good stuff. And fun thing, I do do my parents the same way. Yeah. Because some of them, this is their first babies. So they they've not had any experience with putting their children in a public school. Because I'm a I'm public school. Yeah. Me too. Public school. So they don't know the rules of school and how things are supposed to work. So I do a parent orientation to explain when you come to the campus. You need to park here. You need yeah. to do this. Yeah. You, need to, and you can drop your kid here. You cannot walk. So just like I ingrain the kids, I got to do the same thing for my parents. You yeah. won't be able to do this. This is how this works. When you come in, you need to sign in over here. If you're late, if you do this, that, I have to do the same thing with them. That's good. 
That's good. Now they fucking get with me sometimes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Push back and I'm like Come on. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Um, you know, you hear a lot of uh teacher burnout. You hear a lot about especially on TikTok, right? You're on TikTok, I'm on TikTok, you see the TikTok videos about teachers and they're excited about quitting. Like I quit and they're excited. They are. Yeah, they're always excited, like they quit and you know. Too bad for you that you're still in education. I quit. I'm so free now. You see that all the time. Yeah. How, how, you're, you've been in the game for 30 plus years, right? How, how do you avoid teacher burnout? And then how do educators today, is there, do we, can we avoid teacher burnout? I mean, I know it's there all the time, but. It's there. I, I feel like, you know, for my teachers, I tell them, go home. Okay. Go home. Like, if you've used your day the way that you should, and you've used your time wisely, one, you shouldn't really have to be saying. And if you do, it shouldn't be no more than 30 minutes. So use your time wisely. I tell them all the time, y'all, you cannot just flippantly do stuff. Have a plan, okay? When the kids go to specials, ancillary, that's your time to go on and do the little thing. Get yourself ready yeah. for tomorrow. Put your stuff out. Lay your stuff out. Get your binders ready for the kids to go home. All that stuff. You got a whole hour. Map your hour out. I'm going to spend 10 minutes on this. I'm going to spend 10 minutes on this. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Go get my kids, and then it's time to go so that you can go home. Yeah. And I tell them, y'all are no good to me. If you're not good with yourself, you're no good to me. Yeah. Like you are no good to me or these kids. If you are done, if you are burnt out, go home. Like I'll stay there sometime because, you know, I got stuff to do. And most of the time it's easy for me to do stuff on campus when nobody's there because nobody's bothering me. But, you know, before I leave, I always walk the building, you know, make sure everything windows and blinds are closed and all of that. And I'm looking in class. I'm like, why are you still here? Why are you still here? I'm telling you right now, go home. Yeah. So for teachers who that burn out, plan your time, use your time wisely and go home. Yeah. It's good advice. Get your rest. You need it. Take your vitamins. I tell them all the time. (laughs) Take your vitamins because you need it. Your body cannot function and go on I, I can't even think straight yeah yeah that's good advice <laughs> that's good advice so always end the podcast three tips for future educators three Ooh. tips for future educators uh let's hear them okay tip number one that was the first one. Oh, yeah. That was a good tip. Use your time wisely. Yes. Use your time wisely. Because, like I said, I have teachers who, yeah, it's playing a time and I'm getting ready to go chit-chat. No, use your time wisely so you can go home. Yes. Okay? That. Take care of yourself. Tip number two. And this one, mm, know that this is what you really want to do. Yeah. Know that you are in it, definitely not in it for a check. <laughs> but know that you this is what you want to do for children, for parents. This is what you want to do. Not your why, but this is what you want to do. Yeah. Know that without a shadow of a doubt. Mm-hmm. Third tip. Let's see. What would I say? What would I say? Don't be afraid to try. Yeah. Don't be afraid to try because this is, you know, I look at it like this. This is the initiative that the district is pushing. This is the the new program. That, okay. I'm going to try it. Yeah. But how can I try it the way that I want to try it without yeah not doing it you know i don't want to buck and not do it but i'm gonna still do it but can i make this work for what i got going on in here yeah it's good stuff don't be afraid to try 
<laughs> well, Principal Skiwi, thank you so much um, for being here on the podcast. Where, where can people find you on, on social media? Yeah, they can pretty much find me on TikTok. I'm Instagram, not real big, but yeah. I am also TikTok Principal Skiwi. I'm on Instagram and all the things 1908, but not a lot, just yeah. every once in a while. And on Twitter, Twitter, I do a lot of, they, in fact, they can uh, visit my school Twitter page. ML King, Martin Luther King, and this, then you get to see some good stuff of what my teachers are doing. I showcase them on Twitter. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here on the podcast. Thank you. I enjoyed it. 